Hello and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. I'm really excited today because I have a true curiosity to show you, the Pascal Genie. The Pascal Genie was uh, really one of the first IDEs that a lot of us had any exposure to in the, the 1980s, and it was really seminal as part of the figuring out the right pedagogy, I hope I'm saying that word right, for teaching people without previous experience in programming how to program. So what was the Pascal Genie? Well, the first time I saw it, the Pascal Genie was actually a text editor, a structured text editor that ran on the VAX 11780 at Carnegie Mellon. They had a number of Vaxen called the Edu Vaxes. Uh, I think it was Edu 1 and Edu 2. And it was an entire environment for uh, your Pascal programs. And rather than being a text editor where you could just type whatever you wanted, it had a very kind of um, choose from a menu feel. So if you wanted to add uh, an if then else clause, you would choose that essentially from a menu uh, using kind of the keyboard at the time. Um, and it would put in um, the structure of that if then else statement, and then with some placeholders. And you would then replace the placeholders with whatever variable names you needed. The major side effect of this is you could write Pascal code without needing to ever worry about where a semicolon went. Because everything you inserted into the syntax tree was guaranteed to be valid Pascal, although not necessarily complete Pascal, if you didn't fill it out. That was circa, I first saw it around the summer of 1985. I don't know how many years before then it had been used. And then by the time I returned in the fall of 1986, they had moved on from the VAX 11780 version to a Mac version. Now this Pascal Genie was, was also called the GNOME project, and the Mac version was called the Mac GNOME project. And this was very exciting because one, you could use a spiffy Macintosh instead of a dumb terminal, and two, because you could use a mouse, uh, which was extremely new technology for many of us at that time. So the other week I was thinking about the Pascal Genie, the GNOME project, and I, I went looking to see, well, surely someone must have at least one of the Mac disks still around, and I went looking for it. And I, well, I almost found it. I didn't find the Mac GNOME that I used in 1986. Instead, I found a version from 1994 uh, called the Object Pascal Genie. And this had been developed a little more. There had been a few books, a few academic papers written about it. and. This has uh, more features than the version I used. And interestingly, it feels like they backed off a little from the full structured editing. The, the version of MacNome I used, really the only place you were allowed to type was in those text placeholders. And as you'll see uh, here, they've kind of allowed a little more text editing. So let's write a very simple Pascal program and see how it feels. All right, so let's dismiss our about box here, which does tell us that this came from CMU, various names of the groups, what date this was published, September of 1994. And we can see we have a program here with some boilerplate already uh, in place. And this is what you get um, just by saying new program. Program, program name, I'm gonna call this double me. You can imagine what this is going to do. Uh, We've got some stuff here for our comments. And one thing I will say is that if you did not fill in your comments in scrupulous detail, they would definitely dock points from you. But I'm not gonna bother with the comments here. It's so nice to not be graded on this assignment. So we have a few, what do we see here? We see the program name, the comment, a bunch of mysterious kind of glyphs here and then begin and a placeholder for the statement and end. So I happen to know that this V glyph, if I click it, 
should expand out to uh, our variable section in Pascal where we can declare any global variables. As you know, using global variables is terrible Pascal style, so that's why I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a variable called user input and it's going to be of type integer. Um, any kind of good programming uh, practices are going to go out the window here because really I'm just interested in showing you the Pascal genie and not um, not anything about Pascal itself. So what do we want to do here? Well, I want a function that is going to double this. And then we're, we're, what I want to do is ask the user for a number, read that number in, and then double it, and then tell the user, here's your doubled number. So what are we going to do? Well, first, let's go ahead and write, please enter a number. Oh. I've already made a mistake here. So I just started typing to replace that statement. Um, but that's not really the Pascal genie way of doing it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this construct menu here. And I'm going to say cancel my text editing. Here. And you can see here we have a whole bunch of options here. Assignment, repeat, procedure calls. Well, for right now, I just want to write a message. So we're going to say write. And now it's given me right, and it has a placeholder for expression. And expression is highlighted. So what happens if I choose construct here? Well, now you can see I have a whole bunch of other options that I can choose here. What I want to actually do is enter a literal string. So let's choose literal string value. And I cannot tell if it put the quotes there. Let's try it. Can I just start typing? It did not put the quotes. Well, you know what? I'm going to trust it. Please enter a number, colon, space. And then I'm going to choose Finish Text Editing, which is Command T, looks like. Oh, I did not like that. OK, so I'm going to choose Cancel. And this time, I'm going to put in a quote and say, please enter a number. And close the quote, Command T. Finish text editing. There, and that actually worked. OK, so then I want to read a value. So I'm going to go there, choose reading. You'll note that it added another block for the next statement after our read. Uh, I want to insert our variable here. So I'm going to construct a variable name. And it wants me to edit the text. I'm going to put user input. OK. Finish text editing. And it looks like we could read more than one, but I don't want to do that. So now we have read that variable in. And so we want to call our function. And just for the sake of simplicity, we're using global variables. Mark Stellick would be very upset at me. We're going to assign the result of that function to the same variable that we just uh, read in. So I'm going to put an assignment here. On the left side, we're going to put a variable name, and that's going to be user input. On the right side, we need an expression, and that expression is going to be a function call. So I'm sure that there we go, function call right there. Uh, the function call is going to be the function is going to be uh, we'll call it double number, double integer. And we're going to pass an expression into that. And the expression we're passing in. No, OK. So we got this little dot here. And that dot means that there's some sort of error in the program. And I'm pretty sure this error is going to be there is no function double integer. If I click on it, do I get any kind of? We get some help. We get an error dialog. So you, if you're, pro, if you're a programmer, and you're programming today using, you know, whatever you're using, Visual Studio, Xcode, this all looks like table stakes or less than table stakes. In 1986, this was mind blowing. In 1986, you were, you were lucky if you had a screen editor. You might be using a line editor to, uh, to get your work done where you could only enter a line, in a line at a time and couldn't see the rest of the program. So this really is 
pretty deluxe. By 1994, it was not the only game in town, but in 1986, pretty much was. All right, but we're going to leave that error there right now because we're going to go back and fill in that later, uh, that function. And for the expression here, I can just type user input. And I, in fact, I just see that I have a typo here. I don't remember if Pascal is case sensitive. I'm assuming it is. I'm going to pretend that it is. All right, so now setting aside our reference error, now we've read in that value. So let's go ahead and write it back out. Your doubled num double, double of that is, and then we'll go here, and that's going to be a right line because we want to um, do a new line. And that reminds me that this read probably needs to be a read line. Read lin. All right. So now you can see that we have this excess statement at the end because Pascal, you're, you're stringing statements together. We could just delete that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now we want a function that we're, we're going to call double integer. So I'm going to click this little thing near the P, which stands for procedures. And here's a placeholder for procedure or function. Well, I want a function. Okay, our function name, I think I said it's double integer. Return type, I don't, and I need, actually, that's a good question. Let's try that again. Do I get any kind of placeholder declaration name? No, that doesn't do much for me. It just wants me to type it. Okay, well, it's going to be double integer and it's going to take an argument. Can I do this? Let's see what happens if I do that. No, it doesn't actually. I was wondering if I could define my own placeholders and then be able to put things in there, but it doesn't look like I can. Double integer, um, we'll call it x integer. I think that's the syntax. Let's find out. E... Yes, looks like that's correct. The return type is going to be integer. You might ask, what's going to happen if we give a non-integer to this program? The answer is it's going to explode. I'm, I'm not doing any kind of checking here. Okay, so now we have our declaration, all right? So here we're being offered the chance to make more procedures or functions. I'm going to delete that. I don't particularly want it. And you see we have this mark here, it says go in. So let's go ahead and click that. Boom, we're inside the function now. We need to very carefully write a long comment explaining everything about the function in order to get a good grade. I'm not being graded, so I'm just going to say double. Well, actually, I'm doing it again. I'm typing. We're going to do assignment here. In Pascal, the way you do functions is you assign. It's a little bit strange to me. You assign the, the expression to the name of the function. So that's double integer, and we've already bound this to x, so we want some multiplication, all right? Our left multiplication is going to be a variable name. Can I, will it actually give me the variable? No. It's this strange thing because I want it to actually have semantic information about my program. And really, it just has structural information about how a generic Pascal program is constructed. So it doesn't look like, unless I haven't found it, it knows what my variable names, etc., are. And on the right here, we're going to just say, on the right here, we're just going to say two. All right, we're doubling a number. And then we'll get rid of this statement. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'm going to leave this placeholder here. Let's try and compile the program now with the placeholder still there. We should get an error. I hope. Am I still text editing? Let's try running the program. No, it looks like that is, I thought for sure it would tell me that I had some unfilled uh, in things. In fact, I'm going to 
jump out of this and I'm going to undo. How far can I undo here? Let's get rid of that. All right, so now let's leave that blank and try and compile the program. There, now it's telling me there are unfilled placeholders. Okay, I feel better now. We're gonna undo that clear. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that little statement, dangling statement, because it bothers me. And let's run our program. Okay, and we have a wonderful little debugger. We can single step again, 1986. Okay, this is 94, but this is incredible uh, for the time period. Okay, one step. I'm going to click go here. What's our number? Let's say 567. Double of that is 1134. Congratulations. We've written some Pascal. This might not be, I might not be programming like it's 1979 here. This is programming like it's, I guess, 1991, 1990, maybe, uh, maybe even a little earlier. But uh, I, it's, this is a historical curiosity. Uh, I would like to put a call out there to anyone who has followed along this, this far. If you have an older version of Mac GNOME, if you have a version of Pascal Genie from say 1986, 1987, please give me the disc and I will get it onto archive.org and uh, we'll try and preserve some of this stuff for future generations. I just wanted to share this with you because, you know, uh, I, I think this stuff is neat. I think uh, one of the best ways to understand what you're doing is to understand where you came from and how you got there. And that's why uh, I have this channel and that's why I wanted to show you this today. So thank you so much for watching. If uh, you enjoyed this, please, you know, like, subscribe, tell your friends, neighbors, relatives. This has been Programming Like It's 1979.